sure you've heard the term certified green, but what does it really mean, especially when referring to RVs? This week, Mandy Lazenby from TRA Certifications explains to us what the term green RV really means and how her company goes about inspecting RVs before they get that green RV certification sticker. Then, Ivan Schmatter shows us some fantastic space-saving cookware for your RV kitchen, then prepares one of her favorite Indian dishes that sure to impress your RVing friends. Tired of how your RV kitchen looks? Mark Polk from RV Education 101 demonstrates how relatively simple it is to upgrade the look and feel of your RV kitchen with a new modern backsplash. This is a great spring weekend project that you can do just in time for the upcoming RV season. Then we join Jeff Johnston as he stops by the Crystal Basin Cellars in Camino, California for some wine tasting and an overnight stay at this great Harvest Host location. These stories and more on this week's RVing Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by GoPower. Today, third-party certification is more important than ever. Just having a manufacturer or dealer show you a self-certified label just doesn't cut it anymore. More and more people are depending on third-party certification on many of the items they purchase, especially when it comes to big-ticket items like a house, car, and yes, even RVs, which leads us to how do we know when an RV is eco-friendly? Well, one surefire way is to look for the certified green label. To learn more about the certification process, we caught up with Mandy Lanzerby, president of Certified Green RVs, and asked her to explain a little about their certification process. We've got four categories. It's resource efficiency, energy efficiency, water efficiency and indoor air quality. Just like right now, there's nothing other than my green hang tag over there that really shouts, hey, this is a green RV. That's why we've got a program that looks in depth at these materials. But we look at what the floor is made out of. We look at the wall vinyls. We look at the LED lighting. I stick my head under the faucets and read the gallon per minute flow rate. I look at the shower head. You know, on the outside is going to be able to give you some clues as, as well as far as what's going on. I'm looking for the green cap on the tires, nitrogen filled tires, that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of research that goes into a certification of an RV, whether I'm doing it or someone in purchasing is doing it. And hopefully they've got a binder with everything all nicely put together and I just take a copy and go through it and add the points on the checklist. But um, but yeah, it's really a holistic approach. I'm gonna take a look around this RV. I'm gonna start at the outside, but some of the things I look at when I go into an RV, whether it's for the initial certification or a green follow-up audit, um, I'm gonna look for the kinds of stickers it has on the outside of the unit. Is it an RVIA, RVIA compliant unit? Does it have ZAMP solar ready? Is it already solar? Um, I look for my little green sticker, but some of the other things I look for how many standard awnings does it have? Those are very important as far as keeping the unit um, from gaining solar heat in the summer. Uh, shading is very important, that's considered green. I also look at the tires to see if they are nitrogen filled. Not everybody is buying into that technology. Um, we do for our program, but um, it's kind of up in the air for a lot of manufacturers. Come on inside, I'll sh show you some of the things I look at in here. Shaw for one, Shaw Flooring, uh, that's a great company. They uh, use great materials, low off-gassing materials. The fact that this unit doesn't have any carpet at all, except for, actually there's not even any carpet up there. Um, the lack of carpeting in an RV is very important because we don't want to trap a bunch of outside contaminants in the fibers of the carpet. So this unit is all hard flooring, definitely good for indoor air quality. Another thing I look for is obviously on the wall board, you're not going to have anything that says, hey, this is green. But I know from working with this company that this is a Roysen's wall film, which is water-based ink, um, very, very low off-gassing. In fact, the Berkeley Analytical 
test that was done on this Royson's vinyl was that formaldehyde did not even register enough on their tests. Another thing I look at is water efficient components. This is a fancier faucet, so they really don't want to stamp anything on it. This stamp doesn't say anything about the flow rate, so I get that information from purchasing department. Um, I look at cabinets. Normally, they're not going to say anything because they're paper wrapped, but some of the wood, some of the actual real wood cabinets will have a KCMA certification, Kitchen Manufacturers Association certification that says it is indoor air friendly. Um, another thing I look at is where are the vents? Where are the vents in the unit? Um, if they are off the floor, that earns points on our certification. You don't want to be tracking in, again, contaminants from the outside and then those are falling into the floor registers and then just blowing up into the indoor air. So the fact that they're um, coming from the roof or off the floor, so these are off the floor. It's going to be really, you really have to try hard to get dust and dirt in there. So that's very important. I also look at the appliances for energy efficiency ratings. Um, is this the microwave a convection microwave? Um, I know Furion is a really good company. They're building a lot of products that have a focus on energy efficiency. Um, some of the smaller appliances are harder to find that information. You just got to do a little bit of digging. Um, fabrics are a little tough. They go through so many people's hands, so many countries' hands, in fact. Um, so there's not a, there are furniture certifications, but they really haven't made it to the RV industry just yet. Um, I also look at these vents. These are natural vents. They also are considered skylights for me. Um, I want to make sure that those, at least one or two of those, are standard in a unit. They're great for bringing in, in natural light and they're great for ventilating the RV. Um, another thing I look at is, as far as water goes, how, how many gallons per minute does this shower, does this shower head spew? So this is, usually it's stamped right along here, 2.5 gallons per minute. That qualifies as being low flow, especially for a shower. For a kitchen sink, we're looking at 2.0 gallons per minute. For a bathroom faucet, we're looking at 2.0. No, excuse me, we're looking at 1.5 gallons per minute. Um, I know that one's 2.0, so that one doesn't qualify, but that's okay. We've got another vent in there, so there's a lot of natural ventilation happening in this unit, which is very important. Um, got another energy efficient TV in here. The lighting's all LED, we look at that. Um, but again, none of this stuff, other than like some of the energy efficiency tags are screaming, hey, this is green. Otherwise, you just have a RV full of a bunch of stickers. But this, um, through my green eyes and my green certification eyes, has qualified and they do a really, really good job. So I'm trying to think of what I've missed out on. But um, I mean, we look at the flooring, the wall vinyl. Um, the LED lighting, the efficiencies of appliances. I would have to go out to the outside. We do look at um, the bed. Is, it a, is there anything green about the bedding material? Um, I always tell people just get your own stuff. I don't really know what goes into some of these soft goods. I would rather just, some of them are fitted to the size of a bed, but I prefer something where I know what, that it, where it came from. I don't really want a whole bunch of flame retardants on stuff that I sleep on. But I usually like, I'll give the stuff a smell and you can kind of tell if it has a bunch of flame retardants in it or weird chemicals. Um, I do that to the walls too and to different stuff that's got stains on it. I'll, I'll give it the old sniff test. Um, but this is the center of our certification. We don't, we stop right here. We don't. As far as motorized units go, there's a whole other industry that looks at the efficiency of the chassis of the engine. So if the dealers are unsure what we're talking about here, we've got a nice little hanger that explains the different categories that we're talking about. Um, it, does, it isn't specific to each unit, um, but they can find more information specific to this unit on certifiedgreenrvs.com. When Bedford launched Aquacam, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax. 
Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. While I can do just about anything in my RV kitchen that can be done in a stick kitchen, I'm always on the lookout for space savers. That's why when my Aussie pal, Graham Dalton, inventor of Smart Space Cookware, called me to tell me about his new product, I couldn't wait to get my hands on them. Big Down Under in Australia and New Zealand, they're ultra compact, super high quality, and perfect for my RV stovetop, cupboards, and sink or really any small kitchen or galley. The flagship product is a set of three pots. It also includes one handle, lids, and silicone stacking mats. The set's a little bit like those nesting dolls where one fits into the other, so let me show you. They're really thick and beefy. The lids fit just so, and the handles are silicone, so it keeps them cool to the touch. The small pot, ta-da, is one and a half quarts. The medium pot is two quarts, and the large pot is three quarts. By the way, this is what the silicone stacking mats look like. The pots are coated with an almost catering grade thick Teflon. They have an induction base, so you can use them on induction cookers. And now I want to show you the handles. Here's how they work. The pots have little grooves, one on each side of the pot, where your handle is going to go right into. So I'm going to stick the handle right into that groove, and I'm going to clip it shut. Just like that. It's really easy. To release the handle, you can do so one of two ways. There's a button on the top, so you can press the button, or there's a lever on the bottom. You can pull the lever. Just like that. Really easy. Now, when you're holding the handle, say lifting the pot, it can't release, so that's nice and safe. I also have a fry pan. It comes with its own handle, and it's pretty terrific. Same quality, same concept, super cool. We're going to put this cookware to good use today, making a warm and delicious comfort food meal. So when somebody mentions Indian food, it conjures up the idea of complicated recipes, exotic ingredients, and a certain know-how. While that's true for some Indian dishes, it's not for the one I'm going to show you today. We're going to be making yellow split peas with onions and garlic. We'll toast up some flatbread in our Smart Space fry pan, and we'll serve it all with a nice mound of beautiful brown rice. We'll be using ingredients you can get at any grocery store. Yellow split peas, cumin seed, onion, garlic, cayenne pepper, and a little bit of oil. That's it. So let's get cooking. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add three tablespoons of avocado oil to our Smart Space Cookware pan. This is the three quart pan. We want it to get nice and hot. Once the oil starts to shimmer, we're going to add some cumin seed, not cumin powder, this is cumin seed. It's about half a teaspoon. We're going to drop it in. It's going to start to cook in the oil, and in just a moment or two, it'll start to pop. It'll become very fragrant. In goes the onion. Well, these onions are coming along so nicely. They're almost done. And by the way, I hope you notice with the Smart Space cookware, the corners are radius edged, so there aren't any hard corners for any food or particles to get stuck. Garlic is up next. Now, a lot of recipes will tell you to add the garlic first and brown it, and then put the onion in. In my experience, when you add the garlic first, it gets very cooked and brown and a little bit bitter by the time you get the onions in and the onions cooked. So I do the onions first, 
and then the garlic. And by the way, this is just kind of a rough chopped garlic. Typically in an Indian recipe, they use lentils, but I like to use split peas. I use the yellow, I use the green, because they cook really fast. If you were using lentils, this would cook over an hour, about an hour. Using the split peas, I think we'll get it cooked in about half that time. So I'm gonna put one cup of yellow split peas. And now we're gonna add the liquid. In this case, we're gonna add water. I've got some spring water. I'm gonna add three cups. Well, these little beauties have come to a boil. We're gonna leave the lid on. We're gonna turn it all the way down and we're gonna let them simmer. We're gonna cook them until the yellow split peas are nice and soft and everything's gonna be kind of a, a delicious stew. Well, it's been about 35 minutes, maybe a little bit more and I think that we're almost ready. And you can see that our yellow split peas are nice and soft. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of salt and a little bit of cayenne pepper. It's the final touch, and we'll just let that slightly bubble while we make our flatbread. Okay, we're heating up our fry pan. And what I've got here, some Trader Joe's flatbread. Really simple and delicious. This is frozen. So I've got my olive oil mister. I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil on my flatbread. Not a whole lot, just a little bit like that. Some salt, some pepper. Perfect. Here you have it, our fabulous yellow split pea onion and garlic Indian dish. It's warm, comforting, really easy, right? And it's good for you. Well, Thanks so much for joining me today. We'll see you again right here next time. Cheers. From off the road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcole RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcole.com. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. When your RV gets a little aged, there are lots of simple and inexpensive and fun upgrades you can make to keep it looking new and up to date. I attend lots of RV shows and something I really like is the look of a tile backsplash behind the kitchen countertops in an RV. I've done some tile work in the past, but for this upgrade I found a product that eliminates cutting the tile, using adhesive, messing with grout, and the added weight of real tile. It's a peel and stick tile product that's available at home improvement stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. Let's install some peel and stick tile right now. The first step is to measure the surface area you plan to cover with tile. Ours is approximately 10 feet by 2 feet, so we need enough peel and stick tile to cover 20 square feet of surface area. Check the coverage area on the tile product and do the math to make sure you get enough tile for your project. There are lots of different color shapes and designs available, so you can select one that complements the area you are working on. I always say the key to a good finished product is the preparation and planning that goes into the job. In this case, prepping the surface area will pay big dividends in the final product. Make sure any power going to the RV is turned off and remove any outlet or light switch covers from the area you'll be working in. I use a scuff pad like this to scuff the surface so the tile would adhere properly. Next, clean the surface area with a wet sponge or rag and a degreasing agent and let dry. 
Normally when you're working on a tile project, you start in the middle of the surface area and work your way out to the edges. But with this peel and stick brand tile, the way the overlap is designed, I need to start on one of the edges and work my way across the project area. I am using the top molding of the countertop and the door edge as my border and my straight edge. If you can apply a full sheet of tile, simply remove the backing material and carefully set it in place. If cutting is necessary, get your measurements and cut the tile on a smooth flat surface using scissors or a box cutter with a sharp blade. A quick and easy way to figure out how to cut the peel and stick tile where there's curves or multiple cuts involved is just take the backing surface off one of the peel and stick tiles, put it up exactly where it's going to be placed draw a pattern and then sketch that pattern on one of the tiles and make your cuts. Adding a tile backsplash to your RV is a fun project and a simple design solution to update the look of your RV. You can add this peel and stick tile to your RV kitchen, bathroom, or wherever you like. So what are you waiting for? Take some measurements, get some peel and stick tile, and get started on your own RV upgrade project today. Happy camping. For more information on anything pertaining to RVs, RV maintenance, safety, and other subjects, be sure to visit www.rveducation101.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit rvingtoday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When Thetford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Today, our Rolling on TV quick stop is Crystal Basin Cellars in Camino, California, our favorite kind of harvest host location, a winery. A modest parking area means they can accommodate two harvest host rigs at a time. So you're at Crystal Basin Cellars today, and we're in Camino, California, right off Highway 50. And we've been a harvest host, uh, uh, host for uh, over 10 years now. And we first found this program at another harvest host uh, called uh, Twisted Oak Winery down in Murphy's. And we thought it was such a great idea uh, that we decided to adopt it ourselves being campers. And so we really liked uh, the aspect of um, hospitality. We really liked the aspect of safety that people can come and enjoy some wine. Uh, wine is an integral part of RVing. And uh, that aspect is uh, then you can sleep here safely, go on to your next destination. And one of the things that we think Crystal Basin, www.crystalbasin.com, by the way, um, we think that we excel at hospitality and we call our style of that legendary foothill hospitality. And, um, and if you come here, that's what you're going to get along with some pretty good wine. Uh, we are the third uh, custodian of this property and we only buy grapes from El Dorado County. But what does El Dorado County have? hundred different varietals of grapes. We um, happen to use about 20 and then we make blends with that. And uh, so our quality is extraordinarily high and I think it matches the legendary hospi uh, hospitality that I've mentioned. There's a great selection of wine available for tasting and purchase and the gift shop is likewise loaded with many regional items to tempt a shopper. Harvest Host offers its members a broad variety of places to stay and a winery is certainly right up there on our list of fun spots. 
For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, along with additional videos, interesting stories, and RV news, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.